This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Sony PRS T1, their latest Wi Fi ebook reader. This is a 6 inch Pearl e ink display. They call it Pearl V220. Don't really know what that means, but I know it looks absolutely stunning by e ink standards. Now, I'm really picky about that. In fact, I'm using, I've been using a Kindle 3, not because I enjoy the hardware keyboard particularly, I do prefer a touch, but it had the highest contrast display as far as my eyes could tell. The background is very white and the text is very black. And this is every bit as good. In fact, the background may be a slight bit whiter. Plus, you get touch with this and all the goodness and ease of navigation and stuff that go along with touch. But first, let's take a look around the device. You can see here it has a gloss bezel that's been a subject of some consternation with some folks who hate any form of glare. That doesn't mean the screen is glaring. It's not. It's a matte display. But there is this little shiny edge here. Does it bother me? Not much. And probably the black would be the most reflective. It's also going to be available in red and in white. Also glossy plastic as far as we know. This little spot right here is matte. But if the gloss does bother you, I suggest getting a gel case. You can see here we have nice hardware buttons. A lot of you people love those hardware buttons. We've got the page turn buttons right here, your home button, your back button, and your menu button. And on the bottom here we have the micro USB port that you use for transferring books to the reader and for charging. This, tra this charges over USB. If you want a charger that's now optional. Now that everything is about making e-readers as cheap as possible, you don't get the goodies in the box. Amazon's also no longer including the charger in the box with the new $79 Kindle or the Kindle Touch. The reset hole over here, here are 3.5 millimeter stereo jack. This does play unprotected MP3 files. Power button's right here, which illuminates red when it's charging. The illumination goes out when it is charged. Nothing going on on the sides or on the top. And you can see that it's got a nice bevel that makes it look thinner than it is. So it is slightly thinner than the $79 Kindle, the Kindle 4, which is Amazon's skinny Kindle now. And it has a matte, sort of soft touch finish back here. It feels really nice when you're holding it. It does show some fingerprint oil. Uh, you can clean that with a towel, damp towel paper. And here's your micro SD card slot right here. Pop it open, access the card. Now, Sony always includes a stylus with their e ink readers, at least they have for a couple of years, ever since they introduced IR Touch, and even before that, they had a funky digitizer option on one of their e readers. But these days, we're using IR Touch sensors. In fact, Sony was the first to introduce this type of touchscreen technology for e ink readers. There's lots of little IR beams that are sensing when something touches the screen, and that's how it works. So there is no extra layer over the e ink display to, to deal with sensing touch, which is great. Anyway, yes, you still get the stylus. Here it is. Odd little funky thing here. Get your pocket protectors ready. This is meant to clip onto your pocket because guess what? As you notice when we did a walk around the device, there is no longer a silo for the stylus. They were trying to make it as small as possible and therefore this has to be carried and lost separately. What do you use this for? You use this for highlighting and taking notes. Of course you could use your finger as well if you wanted or any other old-fashioned plastic stylus. Not capacitive, no fancy technology in here. It's just a pokey thing with, with a rounded edge that's not going to scratch your screen. Now we'll compare the Sony Reader PRS-T1 to the latest Kindle. This is the Kindle 4, I guess you could call it. It's the $79 Kindle. This is not a touch device. It is, however, 6-inch e-ink. Kindle's new touch device is going to be out November 21st of 2011 and it will weigh 1.5 ounces more than the Sony. Sony weighs 5.9 ounces which is just like a tenth of an ounce less than this non-touch Kindle right here and they should be about similar in size. So you can see it's similar in size to the non-touch model just a little bit taller. And in terms of thickness it's hard to see on a video but they are a about the same thickness the Sony is actually just a hair thinner if you lay them flat on the table and compare them. Now I'll compare it to the Kobo Touch. Again, similar in size. Kobo is just a teeny bit heavier. Kobo has a grayer background to the display. It's also not as zippy. I also prefer the UI on the Sony myself. But being both fairly open EPUB readers, I know a lot of you are probably considering both of these guys. The Sony sells for $149, which is $10 more than the Barnes & Noble Nook Simple Touch, and also $10 more than the Kindle Touch will be without offers. That means if you don't want to see ads as your screensaver, it's going to cost you $139 from Amazon. Of course, Amazon does have that attractive $99 option that will show you ads, 
And uh, the ads often have good deals for making purchases on places like, guess what, Amazon.com. So I'm not totally against those ads. Certainly an improvement over the days when Sony costs hundreds of dollars more than others. Now let's take a look at the interface here. It's pleasing and intuitive. This is your home screen right here at any time, no matter where you are. You just hit the home button and you come back here. Shows what I've received as a wireless delivery most recently, which is a copy of the Guardian Observer newspaper. I can continue reading the last book I read, which is Stephen King's Insomnia here. Shows me recently added books. I can have access to my entire book collection, my entire periodical collection down here, the reader store. Collections I've created either using my computer when syncing or created directly on the device. And we'll take a look at that. Collections. Yay. Awesome. Easy way to organize your stuff. And if you go to the next page, you see right here we have access directly to the public library. And I tested that out and it worked well. You can search for your library by name. Or you can do a regional search and have it find libraries for you in case you're not aware of public libraries that are lending out EPUB books. You have access to Google Books here, both free and paid, and it's compatible with Google Books that have DRM as well as obviously DRM free EPUB books. This supports standard Adobe Adept DRM and DRM on PDFs. It is not compatible with Amazon Kindle Books, only Amazon Kindles are and Kindle reading applications and it is not compatible with Barnes & Noble Nook Books because that uses a different version of Adobe DRM. I have a quick link to my purchase content here if I have a bunch of stuff on Sony server. So I can just look at that and pull it down and here's the access to the WebKit web browser. This is running Android by the way so you've got a pretty good web browser here and you'll occasionally see little things that, that give you a hint that it's running Android, some of the menu settings and stuff like that. And here we have a little notification bar, typical of Android. Notice right here I can turn Wi-Fi on and off and it tells, tells me what I most recently downloaded and that's actually something I did download a book right from the public library right there and it's showing me. And I can clear the notifications, Android style. It's done much for the speed and stability of the device, so I'm happy they're going with Android. I can look at all the ink notes I've created, any handwritten notes, access to dictionary. This has two English dictionaries, both the British and American English dictionary and several translation dictionaries. Let's take a look at that. We have quick access to the dictionary right here. Right now we're using New Oxford American. We could use the New Oxford English Dictionary. And then if we take a trip to settings over here, you can see you've got all these dictionaries. So you not only have the two English ones, but you've got European translation dictionaries available right here. Collins English German, Spanish, Italian, French, and Dutch. So you can actually use it as a translation dictionary as well. You can load pictures on this and look at them in 16 shades of gray. Oh wonder of wonders. I'm not sure that's a really hot thing to do. You can access audio files and obviously system settings where we just visited. We'll take a look at those again because I know a lot of you like to know what settings are available. We've got general, wireless, application prep, state and time, system management, initialization, i.e. wipe out your device, about to get information, and shut down to completely shut it down. This will go to sleep after 10 minutes, which is, it'll usually show the, the front page from whatever book you're reading, and you can wake, wake it up by pressing the power button. And if you don't use it for three days, it will shut down completely to save power. So under general, we have page term preferences, whether you want to swipe to the left or to the right to change a page, what menu language you want, which keyboard you want, and what country you are currently in. Wireless settings is just for connecting to Wi-Fi networks. It's pretty easy and straightforward. Application settings, once again, we saw there was access to the dictionary. Book and periodical settings, picture settings, browser settings. Browser settings is pretty much everything you see in the Android browser settings here. Enabling JavaScript, page overview mode, text encoding. Clearing your clash, cache, clearing your cookies. All that kind of stuff. Book and periodical settings is just what you want your default font size to be when opening up a book. And here in standby screen you can set what type of image you see. Cover of the last read book is a default option. You can choose pictures that you can see instead, screensaver style or absolutely nothing. And you can choose one that shows you a little message to let you know, hey, I'm in standby. Hit the power button to wake me up. Kind of a useful message. And if you do indeed want to see pictures, there's another way to select your pictures. 
You can set the default download destination, micro SD card, or internal memory as well. And you can also enter a PIN to lock the device so that your five-year-old doesn't go ahead and accidentally buy five books for you. So let's take a look at reading a book. This is a book that I've side-loaded. Though I actually use the Sony desktop reader to load this on a device. You can plug in the USB cable and just drag books to the books directory on this, or you can use the Sony desktop application, which has been totally rewritten. Gone is that kind of eh, icky Java application that they had. It's more stable. Still not the super fast if you're looking at books in your collection. You've got like three or five hundred books, but it, it works pretty well. And you can sideload books into that too and manage them inside of the reader desktop, which is nice. So it sort of functions in the way that Calibre does for helping you manage your collections. It doesn't matter if they have a WDRM on them as long as it's a WDEP DRM. So if you have Kobo books, for example, you can put them in the Sony Reader application and you can put anything in that you've sideloaded. Here's what the interface looks like. You can either change pages using these buttons or by swiping. There is no tapping to change the page number. And this does, you can see, the flash to black every time. It's not using a, that new technology where it only does a partial refresh of the page. I'm okay with that because I don't hate the flash to black, but I know that some of you do. The good part is that you get a complete refresh every time. You don't get any 5 o'clock shadow, which has been an issue with the Kobo and the Nook Simple Touch. Though Amazon has gotten pretty well gotten rid of it with their new $79 Kindle, so that's, that's impressive. If you're in a book and you want to make a bookmark, you just tap up there. If you want to undo that, you just tap again, and the bookmark will go away. And if you want to get to page management settings, you can go to table of contents, previous page, or enter page number, or use the slider, any of these. That's very nice. Tap on the book to make that go away. If you tap in the center, nothing happens. So you have to tap near the bottom. And if you hit the menu button, you can see you can bring up a whole bunch more options. This brings up the same thing that we did by tapping near the bottom of the page. You can create access notes and create notes, handwriting, font. You can choose from eight font size settings and typeface is original whatever was embedded in the book. Plus you have these six other options including the ever popular masses that we first saw on the original Nook. So we've got serif and sans serif font options here. Palatino Nova, really number two, funny name, but a pretty nice font actually for reading with. And you've got several Verdana Universe Text and Freudiger for your sans serif fonts as well. I like the selection of fonts that Sony gives you. They're, they look fairly book-like, at least the serif fonts do. They're, they're not too heavy and slab-like and elegant looking yet easy to read. And we have the customized view function here, which is interesting. You can change the contrast on the book by using adjust view. Go with the original setting right here. Custom, you can set your own brightness and contrast, or you can choose saturated, which I don't see much of a difference on reading book text. It's something called details, I'm not sure about that. Brighter, which kind of makes things a little too white, really, as you can see here. Maybe good for an extremely dark environment, I don't know. Darker makes it grayer than average. And then custom, right here, you can roll your own and choose your own brightness and contrast settings. And if you screwed it up, there's a restore button there, so you don't have to worry about screwing things up hopelessly. Also under customized view, we have Sony's interesting crop page function. It's their way of dealing with margins, I suppose. Because there is no margin setting here, and also there is no line space setting. And lastly, we have page mode. Which probably isn't so useful when you're reading an EPUB book. You've got your standard normal original here. You've got a two-column split, a three-column split, or fit with landscape mode. Now that's great for PDFs, not so much for, for reading this kind of book. So page turn speeds are fine, it's fast. Doesn't matter if you use the buttons or the swiping. Now that's a pretty readable normal size font, but let's change it just so you can see what other font options look like. Say you have really good eyes and you want to drop down to micro text. There it is, absolutely sharp and clear, very small. You do have to have good eyes to see something that small, but if you hate page turns, there you, go. you can get a lot of fonts on the page. 
if you really need help and need big text, you can get big text. And you, the, the increments are now closer together, too. It used to be that there were huge jumps in Sony readers, and now it's really a more gradual sizing, which is good. So that's your EPUB experience right there. So here's a public library book that I've checked out. It's an EPUB, and I've made use of the highlighting feature with the handy-dandy pen, and I've put a bookmark here, scribbled some stuff, done some highlighting, and how do you do that? You can tap and hold, and you can look up something in the dictionary. The dictionary definition starts to appear right at the bottom here, very handy. Or you can look it up in the Wikipedia or Google. I chose. You can choose Add Note, or you can highlight. If you highlight, obviously you get the highlight here, and you can do the, the resizing kind of thing right there. Then do a highlight. And there it is. And you can also remove those highlights if you want. And this time I'm going to add a note. And I have keyboard or drawing as an option. So yes, you can use the on-screen keyboard to make a note, or you can do a drawing. And these will also sync to your computer and sync to Sony's servers. And you can choose to save it. And if you make a mistake, you've got a little eraser here. You can get rid of something. So there's your note-taking feature. It wants to know if I want to save that. And I'll say yes. And you can access notes that you've created right here on the second page of the home screen. Just look at all notes. Now these I saved together as a group, so you can see they're all here together. And now we're going to take a look at a PDF, which we have under one of our collections here. Here's a collections interface while we're here, though. It automatically it creates unread books, unread periodicals, and purchase books. And these are ones that I've created, Contemporary Literature, Pop Lit, Stephen King, and Manuals. So I'm looking for a PDF manual right now. And while we're here, if you want to add more things to this, you can add content, you can remove something, and it uses checkboxes, and you can rename the collection. So say I want to add something. You can choose from books or periodicals. One thing about collections, they have to be on the same storage medium. They either have to be together in internal memory or on a card. You can't mix and match from both sources. And we'll just pick something and toss it into that collection. Hang the checkbox. And we're done. Hit done. And that book is now there. Now that was not a manual, so what if I want to remove that? That was a mistake. Let me just check that book again. Don't want it in my collection. Say done. And as it tells you, if you remove books from a collection or remove a collection completely, it will not remove the books, which is a good thing. All right, now let's move on to our PDF. And here you can see I've used the landscape fit to width setting with this, and it's, it's actually saved that, so when I go back in, we're still looking at the same thing. That certainly makes it more readable. You're going to be doing a lot of scrolling while you're reading that. I, I would not want to read text-based library books like this, but those are usually more readable in a portrait mode, and you can actually change the font size because Sony still supports reflow, which is pretty neat in PDFs. First, we're going to switch our orientation back to portrait mode. Now we have teeny tiny text that you can't read, so we're going to jack up the font to one size bigger, and there we go. We have, we have text that's now readable. It's going to blow out your images and stuff like that, but you can read the text of the PDF. Obviously more useful if you're going to read a PDF library book than reading an illustrated manual. Also, if you, if you download books using this device or using the Sony Reader desktop software, it syncs among all your Sony readers and, in fact, even the Sony Tablet S as well, which has Sony Reader application built in, so you can see anything that you've sideloaded and put into your library, as well as things you've purchased. You can search for books if you don't feel like thumbing through lots of pages of books, so you have a lot of books on here. I'm going to look for...
and there I found my book right there. And if we go in the book, you can search inside of books too. Just kind of a must-have feature. Just search for Crimson, and it's going to show me all the instances of Crimson. Which there are quite a few in this book. Now let's take a look at the shopping experience. We go into the reader store right here. And again, this uses Wi-Fi. It does not have 3G. This is, along with the daily edition, I still say more so this. This is the most standalone reader that Sony has made. You really don't have to ever use your desktop top computer with this. You can shop in the Sony reader store. You can use the web browser to actually download books, as we mentioned, from the library, from Google Books, from some other bookstores. And you can also manage your collections right on the device. You don't need to use your computer to manage and create collections. One thing I did notice, by the way, when creating collections, if I created a collection on my computer and synced the, the reader up with that, the collections came over just fine, but it wouldn't let me edit anything that was in the collection. I couldn't add or remove anything. But if I created the collection on device, then I could add and remove to my heart's content. A little strange there. Anyway, here we are in the reader store. And you can browse, look at new arrivals. It's this typical online bookstore experience. You can go to Google Books, which is kind of neat. Newsstand to look at periodicals particularly, hit bestsellers, and see some things they're featuring up here. Access your account, check out anything that's in the cart. We're just going to take a look at bestsellers right now. So there you get a listing of what the bestsellers are, what their prices, and add to cart buttons. If you tap on the item itself, you can read about it. And there you get your full description. And you can also add it to your wish list if you like. So pretty easy to do, as long as you've got a Wi-Fi access point available. How about the public library? And this uses a web browser to log in. And you can see the on-screen keyboard right here, which does do partial refreshes, so you don't see the whole page blink every time you type something in. So here we are in our library, and this is actually, again, using the web browser. And it does do a refresh every time you scroll, which is a little distracting. Tap on the book and see what's up with that book. Get a description. You can, in this case, put a hold or add to wish list because this book is checked out, like just about every library book in our particular library. But if you do, if it was available, you just tap on the button. It would initiate the download in the web browser. You'd see this little download symbol up here, and when it was done, you could just pull down and tap on that, and automatically open the book. So it's fairly easy to do. And you see, if you press the menu button here, you can go home, you can refresh the page, continue reading, which is more book-oriented kind of thing. Switch your orientation. Add a bookmark. Manage your windows. Yes, it supports multiple windows. Capture a screenshot of anything that's in your web browser. That's novel. Look at your list of downloads, which is handy if you just, like we did, downloaded a book from Feedbooks. You can see right here. That works just fine, too. And if you tap the menu bar, you also get the URL bar available, and you can access bookmarks that you've added yourself. And you can access your history as well. Lastly, if you go to Browser Home, it has a couple of pre-configured handy links for you. Wikipedia, thesaurus.com, reference.com, Goodreads, Facebook, Twitter, and the Food Network. AccuWeather, CNBC, ESPN, and Gmail. And then we'll load our website, mobiletechreview.com, so you can see what a full desktop site looks like. It renders very well, and it supports pinch zooming. I mean, e-ink still, thanks to the flashing and the speed of redrawing the screen, is not an ideal medium for general web browsing, but there it is. Works, pictures, ads, all there. Zoom in. 
zoom in more. You can also tap to zoom. So there it is. Google Books works. Not directly through the web browser. It actually goes to the e-reader store first and uses the shortcut from the e-reader store to Google Books, which is a little bit strange. So from here we'll tap on Google Books. But you could go directly to Google Books yourself using the web browser anyway. But this way you get the Sony Reader Store pretty interface for Google Books. So you can see various books that are available. These happen to be free public domain books here. Just pick one. And it is free and we are going to download it right now. So you can see it says downloading up here. Download complete. Alrighty. And we will just tap on that. And there it is. Ready to read. And if you press and hold the button, you can do a quick advance forward through the book, as you just see here. And as we've seen with other Sony readers, there's just a handwriting application standalone too. So if you want to make notes to self about something, you can create a new note. Uh, buy milk. And in case I forget how to get to the store, I can draw myself a little map. You get the idea. And lastly, we'll take a look at the MP3 player. You could use this for audiobooks too if they don't have DRM and they're in MP3 format, but these are the two samples that they include. And there's the interface, which is okay, you know, for an e-ink reader. Basic stuff. And you're not hearing anything because you do have to wear headphones if you want to hear it. There is no speaker on this. Sony claims that this will last for a month on a charge, that's at reading a half an hour a day with wireless off, and about three weeks if you have wireless on. It is very aggressive about putting the wireless radio in standby, so it does not seem to impact battery life much. That's about the same that Amazon claims for their $79 Kindle, and the Kindle Touch, they're claiming higher battery life, but with all these e-ink devices, let's face it, it's going to go a long time before you have to charge it. Now, obviously, we ha this just came out. We haven't had time to test it for a month yet to see what battery life is going to be like, but we will update our written review after several weeks have passed and make further comment on how well it's actually lasting on a charge. So that's the Sony PRS-T1, $149 by Sony standards, wildly affordable, still $10 more than the Barnes & Noble Nook Simple Touch and the upcoming Kindle Touch, but $10, well, that doesn't really count for a whole heck of a lot in terms of a device that you're going to live with for a year or three. One of the best that we've seen, if not the best, in terms of contrast, white backgrounds, black text, great font selection also that's built into the device. Responsive for page turns, you do get that flash to black with every page turn. If that's something that you hate, this is not the reader for you. You might want to look at one of the newer, new readers from the competitors that have the suppressed page refreshing feature. It does have a music player built in for MP3s and MP3 audiobooks that are not copy protected. It does PDFs. It does standard Adobe DRM EPUB books, so that means you can shop around your public library, Google Books, Kobo Books, or the Sony Bookstore. So it's fairly open in that respect. You just plug in your USB cable, you can drag books to it, or you can read the Sony use the Sony desktop software to put content on here. In fact, you can even, as we noted, put side-loaded content into the Sony Reader application or Kobo Books or Google Books, and, and it'll sync all those for you. It supports collections for easy library management. It's much easier to find your stuff compared to, say, the Kindle interface. If you compare that interface here that you're going to navigate with the D-pad, and if the touch is the same way where you still get a text-based listing, it's not the most compelling in terms of getting through your library and finding things easily. So Sony certainly gets the win on the UI there. Of course, the Nook Simple Touch also has a very nice interface for getting through your books as well. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Sony Reader PRS-T1. Visit our website for the full review.